Sutra. Moreover, good men, to extensively cultivate making offerings, is explained like this. In every mode of dust in all the Buddha lands throughout the ten directions and the three builders of time, exhausting the Dharma realm and the realm of empty space, there are Buddhas as many as the fine most of dust in all worlds. Each Buddha is circumambulated by various kinds of sea like assemblies of Bodhisattvas. With the power of universal worthies, practice, and vows, I am able to deeply believe in and understand them. I can know and see them all. To each, I make offerings of superb and wonderful gifts, that is to say, clouds of flowers, clouds of garlands, clouds of heavy, heavenly music, clouds of divine canopies, clouds of heavenly clothing, all varieties of heavenly incense, fragrant bombs, burning incense, powdered incense, and clouds of gifts such as these. Each cloud is as large as Sumeru, the king of mountains. Commentary Why does the Bodhisattva say, moreover, he has discussed the first two vows to worship and respect all Buddhas and to praise the first come ones, and now he will explain another vow to extensively cultivate making offerings. Moreover, indicates the beginning of the next vow, setting it apart from the previous sections. Good man, universal worthy Bodhisattva again calls out. Good man, to extensively cultivate making offerings is explained like this. Now we will discuss the drama draw of making offerings. What does it mean to extensively cultivate making offerings? You should now be attentive and I will explain this for you. First, what is the scope of this vow? In every mode of dust in all the Buddha lands throughout the ten directions and the three burdens of time, exhausting the Dharma realm and the realm of empty space, in all includes everything. It includes the Dharma realm and the realm of empty space. Exhausting the Dharma realm means reaching to the end of the Dharma realm, totally pervading the Dharma realm and filling up the Dharma realm. Exhausting the realm of empty space refers to totally pervading the realm of empty space and filling up the realm of empty space. The ten directions are north, south, east, and west, the four directions plus northeast, northwest, southeast, and southwest the intermediate directions, and above and below. The three periods refers to time, and the ten directions refers to space, to places, and locations. The three periods of time are the past, present, and future, and here they refer to all Buddhas of the past, all Buddhas of the present, and all Buddhas of the future. In every mode of dust, each mode of dust in all Buddha lands can be divided into seven pieces, and one of these pieces is called a dust mode bordering on emptiness, or a mode of dust. In each of these modes of dust, there is a Buddha turning the Dharma wheel. This is called the large manifesting in, all the, in the small. Although each fine most of dust is so small, each one contains an entire world, and although each world is so large, each one does not go beyond a dust mode. This is an example of what is large manifesting in what is small. The small can also manifest within what is large. The land of the jeweled king appears on the tip of a hair, and sitting in the dust mode, he turns the Dharma wheel. A Buddha land can appear on the tip of a hair, and a Buddha land can appear in a dust mold. Therefore, what is large can manifest in what is small, yet the large does not obstruct the small. What is small can manifest in the large, yet the small does not obstruct the large. The large and small mutually function together. They are totally merged and unobstructed. In fact, the small is a large, and the large is the small. This state does, goes on infinitely, like many lines which illuminate together and reflect off one another. 
they are lighter merging into one brightness without any obstructions. There are immeasurable and uncountable worlds in each dust mold. How can you understand the Buddha drama when an infinite number of worlds are contained in one dust mold? And in each world, there are Buddhas as many as the five most of dust in all worlds. Each Buddha is circumambulated by various kinds of seeds like assemblies of Bodhisattvas. Some Bodhisattvas belong to the Vata Sutra Drama Assembly. Some speak the Drama Flower Sutra and belong to the Drama Flower Sutra Drama Assembly. Some speak the Prana Sutras and belong to the Prana Sutras Drama Assembly. Some speak the Agama Sutras and belong to the Agama Sutras Drama Assembly. Some speak the Vipulya Sutras and belong to the Vipulya Sutras Dharma Assembly. Some speak the Flower Adorno Sutra and belong to the assembly surrounding the Flower Adorno Sutras. Some speak the Suragama Sutra and belong to the assembly surrounding the Suragama Sutra. Each Buddha is circumambulated by a seal like assembly by many kinds of Bodhisattvas. With the power of universal worthies, practice and vows, because of these vows, which are universally cultivated, I am able to deeply believe in and understand them. I give rise to a mind of deep belief and understanding in the Buddha, and in the Buddha Dharma, which is like a great sea. If you have faith, you can enter this sea, but without faith, there is no way you can enter and understand it. So it is said, the Buddha Dharma is like a great sea. Only through faith can one enter it. I can know and see them all. This means to know and see all Buddhas and Buddha lands manifest in one thought, one thought of wisdom. To each I make offerings of superb and wonderful gifts. I gather up all the most superb and wonderful things, things which cannot be surpassed, and use all of this to making offerings to all these Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. What are these superb and wonderful offerings? That is to say, measureless and valueless numbers of flowers in profusion like clouds of garlands, flowers strung together to make garland cloud adornments and streamers and pennants, and clouds of heavenly music, all of which are used to make offerings. The Jet Emperor has Gandavas and Kinaras who play music for him, and sincere music is also a kind of offering. He uses it as an offering to the Buddhas. When you light incense, it drifts in the air to form a cloud canopy of incense in the shape of an umbrella which covers living beings. These are the clouds of divine canopies. In the Suragama Mantra, there is the great white canopy which appears in space when you recite the mantra. There are never any disasters in any place covered by this canopy. No earthquakes, no all natural disasters, and also no man-made disasters. There will be no disasters whatsoever. Clouds of heavenly clothing. The clothing of the gods is very light like nylon. You might even say that clothing made of nylon is clothing of the gods. It is very light and beautiful. The Bodhisattva also makes offerings of clouds of heavenly clothing, or varieties of heavenly incense. In the heavens, there are many kinds of incense, and if you recite the Great Compassion Mantra sincerely, the perfume of this incense will manifest. This perfume is not like the fragrance we know, sandal, wood, and like, because this perfume is not of this world. When you recite this mantra, all ghosts and spirits use this incense to make offerings. It is your sincerity which causes these fragrances to appear. If you are not sincere, you will not smell it, because the ghosts and spirits will not respond. Fragrant bombs. These are bombs which you apply to your body, but they are not the kind of perfume we humans put on our bodies. These are too rare for that. You place them before the Buddhas 
as an offering. Burning incense, powdered incense, and clouds of gifts such as these, just, just like the clouds of incense discussed above, each cloud is as large as Sumeru, the kind of mountains, and is given as an offering. What are the dimensions of these offerings? The size of each of them is as great as Mount Sumeru. What do you say? Are these offerings great? Sutra, I burn all kinds of lamps, butter lamps, oil lamps, and lamps of many fragrant oils. The wick of each lamp is as tall as Mount Sumeru. The quantity of oil in each lamp is equal in volume to the waters of the great sea. With all manner of gifts such as these, I constantly make offerings. Good men, of all offerings, the gift of Dharma is supreme. That is to say, the, the offering of cultivating according to the teachings, the offering of benefiting all living beings, the offering which gathers in all living beings, the offering of standing in for all beings to undergo their suffering, the offering of diligently cultivating gurus, the offering of not forsaking the deeds of the Bodhisattva, and the offering of not renouncing the Bodhi mind. Commentary The offerings made by Universal Worthy Bodhisattva are described by comparing them to the size of Sumeru. But how big is the Mount is Mount Sumeru? Sumeru is Sanskrit and means wonderfully high. Wonderfully mean here means inconceivably high. This mountain is surrounded by seven rings of seas and the four great continents. Purva Vite high in the east, Jambufripa in the south, Aparagodaniya in the west, and Asarakuru in the north. Sumeru is 84,000 Yuryanas high, and the sun and moon are located halfway up its slope, as are the heavens of the four kings. Therefore, Mount Sumeru is taller than the heavens of the four kings. If the dimensions of your offerings are as large as Mount Sumeru, they are inconceivable. I burn all kinds of lamps. To burn means to light. What benefit is there in burning all kinds of lamps? If you light lamps before the Buddha, keen in eyesight, is the reward you will obtain from giving this offering. If you do not have keen eyesight, it is because you did not offer lamps. If you cause the space before the Buddha to be bright, then your eyes will be bright. There are many kinds of lamps, not just one. Butter lamps, which burn butter made from cow's milk, and oil lamps, which burn common oil. In the secret school, there is a drama called Huomo, in which the Vara master lies a fire in front of himself and besides mantras. He may burn butter in the fire, common oil, clothing, or other articles as offerings to the Buddha. The more valuable the offerings, the more the merit and virtue derived. If one burns gold in the fire, the offering is especially great. In actuality, it's not the value of the items burned that determines the amount of merit and virtue derived. For example, if you burn gold, it does not necessarily mean that your merit and virtue is great, or if you burn dirt, that your merit and virtue is small. The determining factor is your sincerity. If you can offer most valuable objects with a mind of extreme sincerity, this shows that your mind is true. If you have an honest mind, there is there is merit and virtue, but you do not have to burn have to burn gold to gain it. If, on the other hand, you offer up valuables but think, what benefit is derived from burning these things since in the end they are destroyed? This shows you do not have a true mind and the merit and virtue derived is considerably less. If your mind is true, you can give up anything to the fire. The merit and virtue derived depends upon the sincerity of your renunciation. This is the Humo drama and several lamps like this are used in the practice of the secret school. In addition to these oil lamps, there are lamps of many fragrant oils, including the same oil lamps, 
The wick of each lamp is as tall as Mount Sumeru. The quantity of oil in each lamp is equal in volume to the waters of the great sea. Whoever can give offerings with the dimensions of Mount Sumeru and give fragrant oils in quantities equal to the waters of the great sea, according to the flower of the Sutra, has made offerings that are of the dimensions of the Dharma realm. What does this mean? If you have an honest and true mind when you give offerings, then the quantity will be vast. If your mind is honest, then the quantity will equal a number of walls equal to the number of sand grains in the Ganges River. With all manner of gifts such as these, I constantly make offerings using many different kinds of gifts in such vast quantities. I will constantly make offerings. In the past in China, there was a very poor person who bought a kati of oil to offer to the triple jewel. He prepared to go to a goat mountain monastery the next day to burn lamps before the Buddha. At that time, the abode of goat mountain, the bright-eyed one who had opened the five eyes, told the guest uh, prefect, Tomorrow, open the main gate. A great drama protector will arrive around 10 in the morning to make offerings to the Buddha to the Buddha, and after he has made his offerings, invite him to eat with the abode. You should be very polite to this Dharma protector, but don't get, don't let him go away. The next day the grounds were swept, and the great mountain gate was opened, and the abode put on his long ceremonial robe to greet the great Dharma protector. When he came to bow to the Buddha. The abbot personally welcomed him and invited him to eat in the abbot quarters. What kind of person was this Dharma protector? He was so very poor that he could only afford one kati of oil to offer to the Buddha. Why did the abbot treat a person who made such a small offering so well? Because he had used every cent of his life's savings to purchase the oil. While this was going on, a rich person who had arrived at the monastery at the same time watched these proceedings and thought the abbot is certainly treating him well. The next day, the rich man bought 1,000 cutties of oil and gave, the, gave them to the monastery to be burned in lamps too. He thought that if an offering of just one cutty of oil could occasion such good treatment, certainly with an offering of 1,000 kattis, one would be treated royally indeed. Before the rich man sent his offerings, the abbot declared, Sumaro open the side door. The Dharma protector is sending oil to burn in the lamps. Ask him to eat in the guest hall. He doesn't have to eat in the abbot's room. The guest prefect did not understand why he was doing this, and after the rich man had paid his visit, he asked the abbot, How is it that you opened the main gate for the person who gave only one kati of oil and invited him to eat in the abbot's quarters? Why you didn't open the main gate or even greet the person who offered 1,000 kattis of oil and had him eat in the guest hall? The abbot replied, the one who gave 1,000 kattis was very rich, and he could have easily given 100 million kattis of oil, and so there was no need for me to receive him. Then the guest prefect understood. So in regard to making offerings, it does not matter how much you give, but you should give with a sincere mind. If your mind is extremely honest, you will obtain merit and virtue. But if your mind is not honest and sincere, even if you give much, you will have very little merit and virtue. Offerings the size of Sumeru, king of mountains, are not really as large as Mount Sumeru. It is the mind you produce that is as large as Mount Sumeru. Thus, your offerings will be of equal dimensions. But if you bring forth a small mind, then the merit and virtue from your offerings will be small. 
Universal Welfare again said, Good man, all of offerings the gift of drama is supreme. The greatest offering is given by lecturing sutras and explaining the drama. The Brahma Sutra says, For every day you lecture sutras and speak the drama, you can eat three ounces of gold. Your offerings of drama entitles you to eat food worth three ounces of gold for every day you teach. But we do not want to take this for granted and not feel repentant and go by rich food to eat if we receive three ounces of gold, gold as an offering. Although justification can be found in the sutra, you do not want to say with conceit, it is permissible for me to buy food with three ounces of gold you give me every day as an offering for explaining sutras and speaking drama to buy food. You should not be so conceited. In the Vara Sutra, it says that if you offer the seven jewels in 3,000 words, this offering is not equal to explaining a four-line verse from the Sutra. So of all the kinds of offerings, the gift of drama is supreme. The offering of drama is the greatest. Now, every day I explain the sutras so that you can hear the drama. This is giving drama, turning the drama wheel, and explaining the four line verse from the sutra. So, of all the kinds of offerings, the gift of drama is supreme. The offering of drama is the greatest. Now, every day I explain the sutras so that you can hear the drama. This is giving drama, turning the drama wheel and explaining sutras is using the drama as an offering to the Buddhas. It is an offering that encourages others to cultivate according to the teachings. That is to say, the offering of cultivating according to the teachings. An offering of cultivating according to the teaching is, for example, the teaching of the paramita of giving, the Teaching, teaching others to give by one's words and actions. Others teach the parameter of maintaining precepts by cultivating the parameter of holding precepts. Someone may explain the parameter of patience. Those who truly understand the Buddha drama cultivate patience and do not get angry. They cultivate patience to the point that there are no pupil, no self, no living beings, and no cell, no lifespan. When some hear of the paramita of Vigo throughout the day and night, they become constantly vigorous and always cultivate according to the Dharma. When some hear the paramita of Dhyana Samadhi explained how one can obtain the four Dhyanas and the eight Samadhis, how one can produce all the immeasurable kinds of merit and virtue and perfect or kinds of liberations. They base their cultivations on the parameter of Dhyana Samadhi. When some hear the Prana Paramita, they cultivate wisdom and do not give rise to stupid thoughts. When some hear an explanation of the Four Noble Truths, suffering, accumulation, extinction, and the way, and are told to know suffering, cut off accumulation, long for extinction, and cultivate the way. They rely on the drama of the four truths to cultivate. When some hear about the travelings of conditioned causation, they rely on this drama to cultivate. Others hear an explanation of the four unlimited minds, kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and renunciation, and they bring forth the mind to rely on the four unlimited minds to cultivate.